Before we dive in and create our components with state and props and all these vital things in React, you can sit down, relax, have a drink, have a beer, have a cup of tea or whatever you're drinking, and just listen to me in this video where I'm going to talk a little about props and state in React. The first thing you can do is to imagine that this is a room seen from above, and the gray circle here is a lamp that's not turned on, and the orange one is a lamp that's turned on. Each of these lamps has a light switch that is off and on. So if I click this one here, I can turn this light on and the light switch is gonna change to on. And this one, I can turn it off. So both lamps are off and I turn this one on and I turn this one on. And this is made possible because I can use state in React. So I have two states for the lamps. I have one state for the first lamp and one for the second lamp. That is the Boolean that is telling if the lamp is on and off. But if we think about this, we actually have a state of the room also because we need this state also for the light switch to change from off to on because these are kind of tied together. So you can look at the state in different perspectives. In this case, I will look at the state from the room perspective. So I haven't placed the states in the lamps or in the light switches. I have placed the states in the room itself because we have a room state. And for the room, it's going to be if the lamps and the light switches are on or off. So we have a state for the room itself. And this is what I talk about in the, for example, the React documentation. They tell you that you can lift up the state to a parent component if you want to use that state in multiple child components. Because if we place the state in the lamp itself, for example, we could only access that state in the lamp and to its child components. Of course, we could place the light switches as a child to the lamp, but that wouldn't be the most effective way of doing it. And it would complicate things if you want to reuse your code. So what I've done here instead is that I have this room here and I place the components in the room. And I'm also gonna have the state in the room. So we can use that state both for the lamps and the light switches. And I'm gonna show you how I did this now and also talk a little bit more about state and props. So if we take a look inside of the code here, this is the application that I created for you. You can also open it up from the starter files in this course, I provided it there. So I have the index file, the standard index file that shows uh, the app component. And the app component is actually gonna be the room. So I could also name this room because this is actually the room component. And as you can see here in the room component, I'm creating two states. In React, when you create a state with hooks, you use something that's called a use state hook. Before we had hooks, we had to use classes to have state in them. So you couldn't ever create a functional component that had state in them. But now we have hooks, and that means that we can have stateful functional components, and that's sweet. So when we call this use state hook, we can initialize it with an initial value. So in this case, I'm giving it false because I want this lamp to be turned off initially. Then I do something that's called ES6 destructuring here. I'm destructuring out this array that I get back from the use state hook. So we can name our state here to whatever we want. In this case, I name it is lamp one on, and then we have the setter for the state set is lamp one on. And there's a few things you should know about state in React. And the first one is that you should look at the state as immutable. You should never mutate the state. Then that means that you always should use the state setter that you get back to set the state in React. If you're modifying the state directly, for example, try to change this one, this means that your component won't re-render and that's no good. And it can also cause a lot of trouble in the future for you in the application. But if you use the setter and change the state and don't mutate the state, your component will re-render and update the DOM. And this is how stuff works in React. You update the DOM when your components re-render. And one more thing with functional components is that we can have as many states as we want with the use state hook. In the class components, you can only have one state. So you have to kind of create an object with different properties to hold your state. So this is super sweet. We can divide the states up now, depending on how we want to structure the state. So in this case, I created two states. I have one for the lamp one, and I have one for the lamp two. So they are doing the exact same thing. The only difference here is when I initialize it, I set this one to true, and this will turn lamp two on. All right, then I have two functions, and these ones are gonna be called when we click the light switch. So I have one for the light switch one, and one for the light switch two. You could have one function instead, but I want to make it really, really clear on how stuff works. So that's why I created two of them. So we have one function for the switch one and one for the switch two. And this one will set is lamp one. That's the setter for the state one for the lamp one. And 
what I do here is that I provide it with an inline function. And when you provide the state setter with a function, it will get called with a previous state. So in this case, I'm going to flip that Boolean value. So when I click the button the first time, this value is going to get be true instead because it's false initially. And this one for the button two is going to be false because it's true. All right, so these are the functions for the light switches. So if we look at the JSX here, what we return to the DOM, this one is a room component. And if I go up here, you can see that this is a style component that we're also going to talk a lot about in this course. I create a style component. That's a div here. So I set some styling on that one on the room itself. I, I make it 500 pixel width and 500 pixels in height. And I set a border on it. And the margin zero and order is going to center it on the screen. So everything is wrapped in this room component. Then I have a component that's a lamp. I'm going to talk about that in a second. And I also have the light switch. So we have the state in this app component. That's the room. So this is where I kind of gather all the states for this little simple application. And this way I can use this state in both the lamp component and the light switch. Because as you can see here for the lamp component, I created something that's called props. Props is something that you can create and that will get sent along into your component that you create. Props is an object, so you can create as many properties on that object as you want. In this case, I created a lamp on prop. So this one will be sent in to the lamp component in the prop object. I also created a prop that's called position. And this is how I can make the lamp appear on the left or on the right in the room. And the lamp on is going to be the state for the lamps. So this one is going to be a Boolean. And that way, this component will know if the lamp is on and off. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And I do the same with the light switch. And for this one, I have the callback. As I showed you up here, I give this one a prop that I call callback. It doesn't have to be called callback. That's a name that I choose. And the switch on, I'm going to give it the lamp state for this one. So you can see that I use the lamp states for both the lamp and the light switches. And this is what I talked about before. If we created the state for the lamp in the lamp itself, we wouldn't be able to access this state for the light switch. Then we have to create the light switch as a child of the lamp. And that's no good as you probably can see now because now we can place as many lamps and light switches we want in our room. So it would be much harder to do it if we place the state in the lamp itself. And I also have a position prop for the light switch. So let's go inside of the lamp component that I created here. I also have a wrapper div for this one. That's a style component. So I wrap everything in that div. And the interesting thing with the style components is that they also can have props because they are also valid React components. So we can use props in our style components to modify our CSS. And that's one of the super strengths with style components, I think. Because as you can see here, this is, a, this is something that's called a template literal. And in this template literal, we can grab the props that are sent into this component. So in this case, I create dollar sign and curly brackets, and I can use a JavaScript expression. And I have this inline function here that gets the props. So if we look at the wrapper component down here, you can see that I also send in a prop lamp on and the position. So I'm just sending along these props that I initially sent into the lamp component. So I get them in the lamp component, and then I also send them along to the wrapper component. That's a style component. And by doing this, I can, for example, check here if the props.position equals to the left. Then I'm going to set the left value to 20 pixels. Otherwise, I set it to 380 pixels, and that will place it to the right in the room. So this way, I can modify my CSS and make it very, very dynamic. So that's really sweet that you also can use props in the style components. All right, that's how style component and props works. So if we look at the lamp component here, I'm sending in these props here. And what I'm doing here is I'm using ES6 to structuring. So from the object that we get that you usually call props, I'm destructuring out these values that I send in. If I didn't do the destructuring here, and I just do it like this, you can see that it warns me here now. Then I have to type in props dot and props dot because the props is an object. So I have to grab those specific properties from that object. But if I destructure it out, as I do here, I don't have to type that in every time. So I destructure out the properties here instead. And there's a few things you should know about props because they differ from state. And the main difference is that the props are passed into the components and you should never ever change the props in the component that gets the props. 
the props values are changed from the parent that is sending in the props to the component. So if the props change in the parent, it's also going to re-render this component here. So never ever change the props values in this component. You can change the state in the component with the state setter, and that's how you, for example, can trigger a re-render when you change the state in a component. So that's fine. You should change the state in the component with the setters, but a prop should never be changed in a component that receives the props. When the prop value changes, this component will re-render and it will have the new value in the props. So that's how props works. All right, we can check out the light switch also. I'm doing the same here. I, I'm structuring out the props here and I have this button component. That's the style component and I modify it with the props here also. So I'm doing the exact same thing here. And you can see here that I send in the callback. That's the function that I have in the app component here. So that's the one I'm sending in with a callback prop into the light switch. And then I have my button and the button has an on-click handler and the on-click handler will trigger this callback function. And this makes this component very dynamic because by using props, you can make your component dynamic and you can use it in different situations. In this case, I can send in whatever callback function I want to be triggered when I click on the button. So that means that I can use this button in different situations. In this case, I also showing the switch on and off because I'm sending in the prop switch on. So it probably won't be useful to much else than this use case specifically. But if you want, you can use this button for something else than to trigger a lamp to be turned on or off. You can turn something else on and off and have another callback function and that will work. So that's what you use props for also. You can make your components dynamic and reusable by giving them some props. And by using these props inside of the component, you can adapt your component and change the logic. You can change the JSX and what it should render and stuff like that. So that is really useful to use props for that. All right, so that's short on state and props. I hope this one uh, gives you some insight before we start creating our own. So let's move on. In the next video, I'm going to talk more about style components and what they are.